The Body Shop with Meredith McDonough and Dr. Steve is brought to you by Allegheny Chesapeake Physical Therapy. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of The Body Shop with Dr. Steve. I'm Meredith McDonough. This week's topic, how do you know when to use ice or heat? I'm already confused, Dr. Steve. Fill us in. <laughs> it is confusing. And probably the best rule of thumb is start with ice. You usually can't go wrong with ice. First two to three days, use ice. After that, you can consider heat. Well, Dr. Steve, is there some rationale for this rule? There is. The, the body responds to an insult and injury the same way all the time. It responds with an inflammatory response. The inflammation is sort of sending all the troops out to heal. In the body, that can oftentimes be overdone. You've seen this most likely if you've had injuries. Cardinal signs of an inflammation are redness, warmth, swelling, to the point where that really makes it sore to move. And that inflammatory response can be decreased and subdued by using ice. Okay, so Dr. Steve, then I guess really the question is then what kind of injuries cause this inflammatory response? Well, things like an ankle sprain, uh, a rotator cuff injury, uh, a back injury, any of those sprains or strains kind of things can be the cause. All right, so Dr. Steve, I guess what's the role of the ice? I used to hate putting, if I had an ankle sprain, I'd put in a bucket of ice. It was the worst feeling, but I guess you have to do it, right? You do. Your body's response is frequently overdone, and the ice doesn't allow that to happen. It slows down the inflammatory response, decreases the circulation to that area a little bit, and by doing that, you don't have as much swelling, as much disability. So you need to put ice on, you need to elevate. If it's an extremity or leg, put it up in the air, get it above your heart, wrap it, compress it. Those things are really good. Um, the only suggestion I have is when you put ice on, don't put plastic directly on the skin because you can, you can make ice up on your own with some alcohol and water so it sort of molds. Uh, or if you're stuck, you grab some frozen peas and throw them on. Okay. And you say above the heart. Why do you say above the heart? Well, because the swelling that occurs is usually because you're below the heart and pulling that fluid off is difficult. If it's above the heart, it just drains towards the heart and back into the system. Okay, that certainly makes sense. Though. Okay, so I guess, Dr. Steve, my favorite part is when you make the switch to heat, but when do you really do that? Well, generally two to three, four days is when you make the transition, and the way to know that is when those cardinal signs of inflammation, the redness, the swelling, the heat, when that starts to resolve, then you can transition over to heat. Uh, it's not a good idea to put heat on something that's acutely injured because that can increase the swelling, that increases the pain, that usually makes things worse early on. So that's why we want to do the ice first. Okay, and how long do you want to keep that heat on when you make the switch? Okay, it's sort of the rules. When you put ice on, you don't want to leave ice on for more than 15 minutes. Take it off, give yourself sort of a half an hour break, then you can reapply it. With heat, 15 to 20 minutes. Put the heat on for 15 to 20 minutes. What you don't want to do is fall asleep with the heat on. Your body reacts to that, and actually the, the effect of the heat is taken away because your body shunts that heat into a different area. So if you want relief, put it on, leave it on for 15 to 20 minutes, take it off before your body can react to dissipate that heat, then reapply it. If you buy one of these hot packs or heating elements at the store, make sure it has a little trigger on it. That trigger, when you fall asleep, you fall off the trigger, the heat goes off. Okay, so what's the bottom line you're telling us with the, whether or not to ice or heat? <laughs> Start with ice. Probably your best bet. You'll almost never go wrong with ice. Heat, you don't ever have to use it, but as you already relayed, it's much more comfortable and it feels good, but make sure you put that on after the signs of inflammation are gone. The redness, the swelling, and the heat, they should be disappearing before you use heat. And that does it for the Body Shop. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Now I know that I have to ice first and then heat. <laughs> and That's hopefully right. everybody at home got the message. But if you didn't, all you have to do is give Dr. Steve a call, and you can call him at 1-800-332-5740 or log on to www.alleghenychesapeake.com for more information. Thanks, Dr. Steve. You're welcome.